Okay, so I'm just working at these um, cool shade vents. You can see they've got um, damage in each one of them. <clears throat> because this is photo etch, I can replicate that just like it is on the original. And I'm using the Chronicles book and finding all the damage around them and trying to replicate them as best I can. So I'm just getting a number 11 blade, Thorn Morton blade, and just sticking the knife in and twisting. And then you've got a damaged vent. It's as simple as that. Just go around each one of them. Some of them are less damaged than others. And it's just a process of twisting that blade wherever you see some damage on the cool shade. There you go. Okay, so um, here we have the engine deck. Um, slightly done by hand. So this is all, all these markings have been done with a paintbrush. Um, these fans have had, or well, the cool shade, um, have all had the rust and the white applied to them. Uh, all the heavy dark washes have been applied as per the ref and a lot of the rust that'll be softened out with the airbrush these are um like a beige color because they're scratching off under on uh, armor plate so that's the that'd be like a tam tamiya mobile wagon or something i haven't got the key list with me at the moment but that's um that's definitely a, a tamiya uh, sort of beige brown styrene um plastic and that's just scratched back to reveal that and there's some heavy washing down the bottom here and just the rust bits over the panther <coughs> grills. So now I'll get the airbrush out and start doing their streaks. Okay, so I'm literally just misting pretty much with the uh, dark lark. Not going too heavy. Certainly not doing massive black streaks down that you see in some people's models, which is entirely up to them what they want to do, but if you're going to replicate the Fiber Falcon and stay true to the island model, they didn't do that. So just sort of just feathering the airbrush. All around these panther grills. And over the areas. Just given the, the shadowing, just trying to give that sense of depth before you go in with perhaps a, a tiny few drops of engine black in with the mix of SB uh, Lark Dark to give it some final um, darkness to the streaks. And, and again, you, you do your own, you, you're bouncing about again just to try and differentiate the panels and give it some sort of modulation that changes just adds interest bouncing it around okay okay so that's about as dark as I want to go um, looks far brighter on camera but that's got that five foot I mean, I've already gone too dark on that um, tiger thing, uh, panther grill, but um, I can miss that back. I'm going to do some uh, misting with the uh, foundation next, and again, just miss, just bouncing that across. All sorts of spattering over the back as well. Again, that'll just bleh. add interest. Taking it far away and misting from an angle. Again, more spattering. Try that off because it landed on the grill. So that one. And then you've got 
got that look of the five foot, hopefully. And then I'll go in again with a fine brush and start detailing all the other little bits. Okay, there's some actual streaking. Um, there's two lines that go down there. So I'll just try and do that. Oh, before I forget, these are really handy to go around the, the grills. They fit perfectly. Just to, uh, as a mask, just a little bit of um, woeing photo etch. Uh, anyway, I digress. Let's get some streaks down. Uh, where are they? Uh, it's just two next to these parts there. One, two. I'm not very happy with that. Let me try that again. That's a bit better. So it's two streaks there. I'll get them uh, more defined with a brush, I think. Anyway, um, and then there's some over the other side. Parsley, I think there's a MIG gun. I think they're the same as what the Death Star Tower has. Uh, that there, there's a streak that's right down there, very faint. Uh, I think I might use masking tape for that. So my airbrush wasn't working very well earlier on. I was like, what is going on? I cleaned it over and over and over again and still no air. And I was like, this is infuriating. Tried a different airbrush, exactly the same. And I was like, what is going on? So annoying. And the whole time I'd been, the wheel of my chair was on the hose, air hose. So <laughs> always check the simplest of things when your airbrush isn't working first before you dismantle it. It's always good to clean them, but uh, yeah. That was slightly annoying. Okay, so according to my ref, that's pretty good. I'll just go in with the brush and tighten that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna tighten that other one up. There you go. That's that one. Um, Above here, there's a little bit of splodging to do. And that'll do. Again, on these, um, I think they're MIG, en MIG engines, possibly, I'm not sure. They, uh, they've got some uh, scraping back on the original, so I'm just going to use some sandpaper. And knock them back. There we go. Simple as that. Okay, so moving on to the awesome turret now, and I've got some handy ref with the um, Sculpting a Galaxy book from Lon Peterson. And I've also got the New Chronicles um, books which show the black and white images, which are fantastic <coughs> for shading and showing you where the blast marks are, streaks, all that sort of stuff. But the first thing to note is the um, red patch has the white dremeled bits in. Now, rather than dremel them, I'm just going to use the base coat. And I've already put that down using the liquid mask. But I'm probably going to find that's too dark because the base coat is sort of being given that reverb white look, whereas <clears throat> when you dremel it down, they might have gone into bare white plastic. So I might still have to highlight that with the brush and white later on. But you can see that it's not just the red chipping, there's also tons of gray underneath, and then even black where it's gone right down in there as well. So I'm gonna have to use, I think I might even go with the reefer grey dark. Too sharp under, no, um, don't know. I got, I got a little light reefer grey and see how that looks. So I'm gonna spray that panel now with light reefer grey. Okay, so that's been given a coat of the reefer grey light. And now I'm gonna go over 
and do the chipping on these areas around there and I won't remove the mask all obviously that I've just put down because I'll let it stay white so now I'm going to just plot in these with the grey chipping just with a rubber tip scalpel not scalpel Ugh, I don't know why I'm, I mean um, rubber tipped sculpting tool that's what I meant to say Okay, um, go over the white blobs. It goes across there slightly and under, and the same on the other side. So the amount of Oops, I pulled a little bit off there. Let's put that on again. So this little um, amount of work I'm doing now seems pale in comparison to a FET helmet where you're going through tubs of this liquid mask. And I've done a few of them and my time's done with FET helmets. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of work and my hat my helmet goes off to the guys that do those fair helmets because that's a ton of liquid mask. So there we go. Okay, so now we're going to lay on the 1975 boxcar red. Oh, my airbrush is splattering a bit. for a clean but I'll just quickly get this panel down get the old hair, bright, hair dryer yeah the airbrush definitely needs a clean that's a a uh, problem you get with the Acrylic sometimes drying on the tip. But, uh, there we go, that's the boxcar red. Okay, so that's the boxcar red panel down. And that's a bit dark because it's gone over the top of that grey. So I'm in two minds whether I should lighten it up. Um, yeah, I think I will actually. Right, I'm going to mask that off again and give it a little bit of um, lightening with um, just some standard red because it's noticeably different to the ref in the middle and I think they've attacked it with um, with some sandpaper and that that would have lightened up a little bit but you got to remember look I mean, look at the equipment look at the size of that hand compared to that so the fact that it had grey underneath on a part that was you know huge it wouldn't be so dark. Does that make sense? So the fact that it had reef of ground underneath it doesn't matter on such a large scale because so much paint was going down in it, but on such a small scale like this, you have to sort of compensate for it somewhat. If I'm talking bollocks, then I'm talking bollocks, but uh, <laughs> I usually am, <laughs> but we'll see. Let's just lighten this up a little bit with some red and see how it looks. Okay, so I've dropped some 1980 SP Scarlet in which wasn't around in 77, but it's just, a, I don't care, because it's <laughs> it literally is just, just to serve a pr purpose of just lightening up the middle section of this panel. I'm gonna give it a few little um, squirts just in the middle, just to bring the, just to bring that um, red up somewhat. I'm not gonna go crazy on it, just enough to, Make a difference. Sorry, I'm taking this away from the camera because I'm doing it. I'm masking again while I'm spraying. Okay, I'll just do it again on that side. Right. 
that's made a bit of a difference. I'm going to leave that now and see how that turns out. Mm, wobbly camera. Okay, so um, that's made a difference. And it's uh, slightly brighter. It's difficult to tell about the sun shine sort of coming in at an angle. But if you look at the original, there is a significant difference between this panel over here and that one over there. But again, in the famous words of Guy Cohen, you can't go by colour by these old books and you need up-to-date ref. And there isn't much up-to-date ref. There was a picture that Bill George took, and I think Jason Neeson put it online, and that was... Um, that shows an outdoor picture of the uh, Falcon, which is good to, to go by. But uh, unless you've got it sitting next to you, you, it's just a guessing game. But um, anyway, that's that's where we stand at the moment. Let me take that mask off and just see how that looked. Yeah, I'm going to have to go over with that white again. And you can see it a little bit at the top there, but um, get the old rubber. Yeah, that's a second. It, 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 it's working. It's working. <laughs> So yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, and then there's the little black bits inside. So, um, so up here, there's some Dremel down black bits, and then on that dot up there. Anyway, I'll carry on doing that. But um, that was just a quick showing of how I've done that panel. Okay, so I've gone round and I've added the blast marks and little white chipping and some foundation around here. Um, that still needs to be darkened down and already I've seen a few parts on the ref <coughs> that Bandai have missed and that's probably just due to the um, timing of when the camera was, or well, the picture was taken. Uh, there's like a little, um, like, greebly there, and then there's one over here somewhere I found. <coughs> oh yeah, there. Those two bits have been replaced um, with something there. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm going to be doing this sort of tan section here that I think sometimes people struggle with a little. Again, that was most likely airbrushed with um, on the original, but... It's going to be tricky to airbrush that at this scale. So I've used um, the Archive X enamels now, 1975 Earth and 1975 Rust. And it's such a nice feeling opening up that enamel again. It takes back, you know, the memories of when it, all Archive X was, was just the enamels and the smell was lovely. <laughs> um, and I'm using some uh, white spirit just to mix that down and the beauty of enamels is that you you can sort of blend them and they're like oil based so they're like oil paint in a way so now i'm just going to make a a wash around the edge here and just sort of just blot that in around uh the image that I can see in the ref. You can get a cotton bud and just soften it out as you go. The cotton bud is a, such a useful tool that I use all the time. It's like a it's like a paintbrush in itself to me. And I'm just going around and just softening out. Oh, sorry, not softening out. Putting on the areas where it's dark. 
And there's lark in there, dark lark in there as well. Again, it, this would have been airbrushed in. But for more control, I'm just, I love using the paintbrush as well. I'm, I'm an artist, really. Uh, you know, I began using paintbrushes and it's painting figures and model tanks and that sort of thing. And to be able to use it whenever I can, I, 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 I do. There's like a line going there. Another line going across. I hope you can see this. Another line. And then you can go back in with your thinner and just manipulate that. Soften it out, make the edges not so harsh. And just keep working around that. So on the other side, there appears to be some rust. So don't all around here is rust. It's more orangey than the earth. So I'm assuming this rust and it seems to be doing its job. Then get the thinner. Lock the thinner on. I'm just using a um, what's this like a triple zero brush or a double zero? And uh, there you go. And I'll keep working at that. I will give it some airbrush because all the edges here have been airbrushed with dark lark, so I will go in with the airbrush, but I haven't quite finished plotting down this earth. So I keep drifting away from the camera. <clears throat> this is a very, this is a rare time when there is a wash on an eyelet model. But it's not in the traditional sense of a scale model that's washed. They don't need to make washes on these huge models. They're just too big. Absolutely no point flooding it with wash on these massive models because the detail of the kit parts and greeblies show that. The shadowing of that. An, an idea of a wash is to bring out the detail, but you don't need to bring out the detail in a five-foot model. It's there in front of you. So to replicate that in one of the 72nd scale with a wash is just ludicrous. It just looks like a spider web. Okay, so that's as far as I've gone with the oil paints, or the enamels anyway. And then I'll go in now um, with the airbrush. Okay, I've got my paint mixed up. And I'm just gonna go around with the airbrush very carefully. can even do a wash by putting their tip we got it's all over here as well and there's tons of it at the back here
Massive streak that goes from there right across. Also, like floods of um, wash of like the earth. So I'll try that next. Okay, then there's sort of this um, <coughs> flooding staining mug. I've also done the orange inside the cockpit as well. Um, so all down here, there's there's all down here, there's like literally staining. So that sort of staining. And get a cotton bud. My favourite tool, let's roll it off. And then more staining around here. And roll it off. And when the thinner dries, you'll have a, you can see it glistening now. When that dries, you'll have a paint effect that resembles, hopefully, the falcon that we're trying to achieve. Have fun with it. So there we go.